everyone to The Great Debate, where today we're going to talk about the question of what Western mediums, what Western, Western franchises, if I can use my words, we would like to see adapted into anime. And I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, an illustration. I'm talking about a full 13, 26 episode anime series that's canon. It's absolutely part of the franchise. Jay Biz in the chat room threw out one a little bit earlier. Total Recall. Absolutely right. It would make for a fantastic anime adaptation. We can do an adaptation. We can do a, you know, a reboot or just an anime version of a thing. That's fine. But the thing is to focus on you know, a, a real thing, not just them sort of taking and running with it in some crazy way. I'd love to see Doctor Who in anime. I've always felt that the, the imagination and the weirdness of Doctor Who would fit that really well. I know there's a Doctor Who animation a guy did with, I think, John Pertwee uh, anime version and a little short animated film, which looks great. But I'd love to see you know, a multi-episode anime Doctor Who. You could just go wild. Have a, the TARDIS flying all over the place, all sorts of crazy aliens, and just really make Doctor Who feel like, I think, what the writers imagine is going to be on screen when they're writing Doctor Who, but it rarely actually looks that way in the show itself. That's one of the things I would... I would like to, uh, to see. They can certainly do Game of Thrones. I mean, anime has no problem with the violence or the nudity. So it wouldn't surprise me really to have a Game of Thrones. We had Highlander Search for Vengeance, which certainly has a kind of a Game of Thrones-esque vibe. It's obviously, that's um, not cyberpunk, it's post-apocalyptic. But still, yeah, Game Escape, Fifth Element. That's a great choice. Fifth Element definitely has those anime vibes. To that point, I think Star Wars. I think Star Wars fits anime very well. The lightsaber battles are very, uh, very anime, the, like the, the prequel and sequel ones. Actually, more the prequel ones. The sequel ones aren't that that flashy or crazy the way the prequel ones were. I, I feel the prequel lightsaber battles were very anime inspired. Um, but yeah, those, those sort of, you know, huge space opera. Obviously, things like Valerian, I think, probably should have been anime. <laughs> that makes sense. So Jay brings up Star Trek. I don't know that Star Trek would be an ideal thing for anime. I, and I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to kind of dig into it because it is very talky. It is very quiet and kind of folks talking back and forth where um, I, I think just you know what you can do in anime gives you a lot more to, uh, a lot more to work with. So I, I, think, I think Trek would work very well if you went a little more spectacular, a little bigger, so like the movies, you know, that kind of tone, that kind of feel, I think would work better for a Star Trek anime as opposed to, you know, Star Trek TV series, I think. Yeah, and Tron is obviously, you know, Tron Legacy obviously has a, an, an anime vibe to an extent, but you're absolutely right. I think Tron is just crying out for an anime adaptation. It would be hard just because of the, the weird visuals of it. Yeah, I mean, anime has got all sorts of, you know, anime can do fantasy cheaply. Relatively speaking, right? You can draw a dragon as easily as you can draw a car. So why not just do things like Willow, Crawl, Dragon Slayer, all movies I love. I was watching the very cheesy Ator, the Fighting Eagle, the other night. And it's a cheap, cheesy fantasy film. It looks so much better animated. Because you don't have, you know, cheap special effects. You don't have cheap masks. Everything can look right. Oh, interesting game escape. Yeah, something dealing with kind of cross-cultural stuff. With the differences between Japanese and, and American culture. You certainly get that in the live-action movies. There, there are a fair number of Japanese. Uh, Hideko, the bus conductress, is a, a famous, a rather Lost in Translation style um, thing. From what I've, I've not seen all of Lost in Translation. But uh, definitely Hideko, the bus conductress, and other things like that. You get in live action, not so much in anime, which would be interesting to see, because anime can do slice of life so well. You're absolutely right. To that point, I think I would be interested in seeing, I don't know, something, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I think Sabrina would be ideal for anime, right? And I believe there's an animated series of Sabrina somewhere, but I think that would just, you know, that just fits in that they have, it's a magical girl series, right? Let's, let's do some Sabrina anime. Why not? It's kind of funny. I would love to see more sort of shoujo series done in, in the Western world. I'd, I'd love to see American live-action adaptations of 
like shoujo slice of life romantic series. Lost in Space. Awesome thought. Yes, Lost in Space is just crying out for for that because the original series looks so of its time and every adaptation has tried to update that but you need that kind of weirdly retro with modern which anime tends to do very well yeah Breaking Bad is basically live action death note you're absolutely right that's that's very true I love to see Ring World which was kind of the inspiration for Halo and it's a little story about a a ring world and it is a sort of big budget space, not quite space opera, epic space adventure story um, in this, you know, wild science fictional world that's also kind of forgotten. Like it was built and then left. And there are all these civilizations living on it that have forgotten that. I love to see Ring World done. Firefly, yeah. So Dune Van Riley is the dream. I think Dune belongs more in animation than live action because Dune is meant to be so far removed from our experience and our relations to technology and our relations to each other, while also being obviously a metaphor for certain things in our culture and our civilization. But Dune shouldn't feel like people on sets. It shouldn't feel, um, it, it should feel kind of alien at that level, uh, while still being very relatable and human, which again, anime does all the time very well. Having the, that, that, that weird technology everyone's just kind of familiar with and, and, and everyone just uses, while also telling very human stories, very straightforward stories. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, Dune is just crying out for that. I'm actually looking at my sci-fi stacks now. Um, actually, there's a uh, uh, David Brin's Uplift series, or series of novels, never been adapted into live action. Uh, and it's set in a future where humans come across this, there's a vast galaxy of aliens and basically every species is uplifted or brought into sentience by another species. So you, got, you get kind of adopted by a higher level species and then brought up into, uh, into sentience. And the, every species has done this all the way back to like this, found, this founder race. And then they, they come across humans that were not uplifted, like they spontaneously arose to intelligence. And so it's about a, uh, the crew of a starship that is a, um, some, some of them are humans, some of them are dolphins, which they've uplifted into sentience. Uh, and then there's other stories with uh, part human, part uh, simian, like monkey crews. And so it's kind of dealing with this very wild sci-fi universe because you have these cultures that go out and look for various you know, alien races and kind of find you know, these monkey-like animals here and these you know, lizard-like aliens there and then very deliberately genetically engineer them up to be a useful sentient race. And you do that and you get something really, um, you know, really remarkable. And so you can do that in anime because you can have all these weird character designs, all these weird aliens. And you can have, you know, dolphins as characters and monkeys as characters, which would be hideously expensive. Like you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, you have to be Planet of the Apes to do that and spend $100 million. Whereas you can do that in anime. Boom. What do you guys think of, like, the... I know it's not quite science fiction, but, like, the John Wick kind of stories. The, um, the Bourne movies. Those sort of James Bond-esque action things. I think those work pretty well in anime. Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, I think that that would work because Alex G has this problem that, again, it's that anachronism problem where it's supposed to be this melding of these classic characters with real life, and I think that works better in animation. Hey, Yujiro. Attack the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah, they did a cartoon of uh, the Toxic Avengers, which was you know a very R-rated movie, and which they did a Saturday morning cartoon of, and that kind of works. Expendables. Although Expendables kind of, you know, it's, it's all about the, you know, seeing all of those 80s actors uh, and 90s actors. But yeah, those sort of over the top, not over, uh, those, those very slick action movies I think might work well in anime. Or it might be one of those things where it's like, maybe those like diehards work better in live action because it's, it is all about the 
coolness of seeing real people do the, those things. I don't know. Hard to say. And then you got these the, the, the sci-fi things like AI, the, you know, the one-offs, that, where it's like, that probably should have been, you know, should have been anime, where it's like, why did you spend half a billion dollars on all these special effects when you could have just drawn them? Um, just seems like, not that you can always do that, but Dark Crystal anime, Tonto, that's, oh, oh. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would just blow my... One second. My heat pad keeps fizzing. Which implies that something keeps dripping on it. Which should not be the case. Okay, I think we're okay. That's weird. Sorry. Yeah, Jackie Chan Adventures was... Based, and I'm sure Jackie Chan Adventures was actually animated in Japan or Korea. Like, that, that must have been outsourced to some Korean studio. It, it, it just... You know, it's too close to the style to be anything different, I think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Jackie Chan Adventures is... I've always found that a weird choice for animation, though. Like, the whole point of Jackie Chan is that he's doing it. That it, it's literally him doing these crazy stunts. And then they make it all in animation where they can do anything. It's like, just odd. I don't know. Odd, odd fit of things, right? I think Transformers would make a good... Oh, wait. Right? So, yeah, it's that's the kind of interesting thing. G.I. Joe, I mean, they, we've had G.I. Joe kind of move into that more anime style with some of their uh, more or less direct video stuff. But I think G.I. Joe would really benefit from a, again, again like a, maybe a 2650 episode long anime run where you can just be PG 13 the entire time and really go hardcore action. I think that would work. I'm obviously showing my age, but that'd be pretty darn cool. Robotech? That'd make a good... Oh, right. No. Don't know. But Lord of the Rings. I think Lord of the Rings make great anime. You know, look at... Record of Lotus War is basically D&D &D anime, and that would work. You have to check. Mmm. Envelope, antelope, THX 1138. You're right. That is just stylistically, visually, screaming for an anime adaptation. Because then you can get across that feel. The problem THX always had is trying to get across this dystop this massive dystopian society. This idea that you know all of Earth is living this way without limited budget. And I think with anime, you can totally get that across. You get that across more in the special edition, which ironically does improve that, that movie quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I think that... Yeah, THX 1138 is is ideal. Not that Lucas will ever go back to that, I, I, I bet. What about Avatar? Like, not The Last Airbender, like Avatar, the James Cameron movie. What if that were anime? I mean, it is very anime in concept, right? Meeting of worlds, focus on nature. Like that, it, that feels, I mean, I think Cameron's Avatar would fit anime surprisingly well. And you could you know, do multiple episodes really delve into it you know the movie is kind of simple so actually delving into some of the complexities of that that world and that those relationships i think would would work well yeah battlestar either either version too i was actually rewatching some bits of the original battlestar. yeah, yeah. cameron's avatar is basically princess Mononoke, okay um just with naked uh, blue people yeah battlestar galactica i think would would work great I'd love to see them take on like the classic Battlestar style with the you know the the all chrome Cylons and you know, woo, 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 woo. I was at the Museum of Science a, a a science fiction convention put on by a group trying to establish a science fiction museum in Washington D.C. last weekend and they had a little museum area there with a full you know 1979 Cylon sitting there with the eye going back and forth. And I was just thinking about, you know, just quick tangent. So those of you who are familiar with the old Battlestar Galactica, and I think there was a, a reference to this in the, in the new one, the basic Cylon uh, Centurion is this basically, is this you know, mostly chrome uh, thing. Imagine trying to light that to film it, you know, without getting the camera reflected on it, you know, 
That was crazy to try to do. Yeah, you're right, Van Riley. I think I think a lot of comic books would, would work better in anime. And in fact, you know, you, you look at the Marvel and you look at the you know, I loved Iron Man: Rise of the Technovore. To me, that was a very a, a perfect match of style to to concept, and you don't have to spend lots lots of money you know, trying to figure out how to mat a CGI uh, Iron Man suit onto a shot of a city. Right? You just animate it all. Stargate, yeah. Star, yeah, Stargate, you know, the more I think about Stargate, the more that feels anime. It is human problems with a big universe that still doesn't have to feel um, too crazy or wacky. Like, you can, you can tell your, your intimate human stories, you can also tell your big action stories, and those integrate really well. Yeah, I think Stargate would, would work really nicely. I like that a lot. And in, 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 indeed, I think, actually, Babylon 5 is just like that. It is a, yeah, Babylon 5 should have been anime. Nah, it shouldn't have. But, it was, oh, excuse me. Hmm. That was a creak in the floor. That wasn't me. Yeah, I, I love to see Stargate. Um, and you know, something, you know, we're talking about comic, you know, Hellblazer, I think, would fit anime perfectly. The whole idea of a, an, a supernatural investigator where you got the, you know, the world of the of hell bubbling over into the real world, that's yeah, it's a lot of hentai actually, but uh, also it's just yeah, it's a it's a natural fit. You can get the, the weird style, the weird feel of it, would work really well. I've, I've always thought Watchmen would have fit better as anime than a live action movie, or at least it's animated, right? Do it like the do it like a your standard DC animated series. That that I think that would work well. Um, and you got stuff like Transmetropolitan, the other kind of weird, weird stuff. Um, yeah, exactly. Alan Moore hates those. I think they work really well. Totally. Um, Jodorowsky's work, the Inkal, that's basically anime waiting to be made. I mean, it's more European animation. This would probably be European made. No, but hey. Yeah, they did the Blade Runner anime short, and that look, look, looked... Perfect, right? Like that fit into that. And obviously, anime has been pulling references from Blade Runner for, for quite a while. So it's not like it's hard for them to fit all that in. And granted, Alan Moore hates everything. So I think no matter what adaptation you'd make of Alan Moore, he would just spit all over it. But what can you do? Uh, let's look back at this the sci fi and fantasy shelves. Ooh, Terry Pratchett. The Discworld novels, anime. Uh, they've done live action, they've done animation, but the British animation industry just is not up, up to snuff to really get that across, I think. Um, same thing with live action, just you, uh, you need a big budget. But goofy, comedic, f high fantasy? Oh, anime would be all, would be all over that. that would look, it would look fantastic, it would look, it would be fun. Right? You just really go nuts. What about The Expanse? That's tough. The Expanse is tough because Harry, because, um, yeah, Harry Potter, uh, you know, The Expanse is very hard science fiction. Obviously, you could do it in anime, but how they did the live action was so impressive. I don't know. I don't know. It certainly could, could work. Yeah, I think Harry Potter. Harry Potter would work in anime. I think the live action was, you know, effective enough. But, you know, it'd be funny it would be to see uh, an anime studio take over The Expanse and do, like, the last couple of seasons all anime. You know, that's one way of solving the problem. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Trigon's basically Wild Wild West. But, yeah, Wild Wild West would be a great, um, great connection. It's funny, I have... Like I did, I was talking about early range. I did Trigun. I'm trying to think of a bad anime western. Like when anime does westerns, the few times I've seen them, they've gotten it right. There's no weird cultural problems. You know, you watch any anime set in uh, America, and they usually get some some stuff kind of weird. 
but usually wild westerns are done pretty darn well in Japan, oddly enough. I'm sure some folks in the comments will give me some, some, uh, you know, what about this one? But, I don't know. Wheel of Time in the fantasy world. That is such a big, sprawling story. Um, Wild Arms, I saw the first episode of Wild Arms, and it was, it was fun. It was a shonen series. It wasn't really Wild West. It was kind of an anime Wild West. You know, it, it's more Dragon Ball Wild West, from what I recall. Um, so it was fun, but it, was, yeah, it wasn't trying to really evoke, as I recall, and this was many years ago, it was, really wasn't trying to you know, recall the, the Wild West aesthetic, you know, uh, extremely closely. Um, but it was definitely, uh, it definitely matched that style properly. Yeah, Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time is this massive story. It's got weird fantasy. It's got weird magic. Um, but it's got that human drama. Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sports stories. I think if you're going to do more Rocky stories, you know, look at Megalobox. Look at Machida no Joe. Look at pretty much any sports anime. And those are just really, really intense. And really, really, they really pull you in. What are some of the other, you know, Raging Bull? I think Raging Bull, it's not really a sports movie. You know, sports are involved and they are a theme, but it's really about the, the you know, it's, it's not really about boxing per se. Death Race, yeah, which is basically Redline. Um, I mean, not really, but Redline definitely feels Death Race in, in genre. But yeah, Death Race 2000, that'd be great. And it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a, good, it'd be a good series, too, Death Race. You know, a good 13-episode anime series just racing through all these weird environments. Do a sort of space dandy-like, where each episode can feel different, has different directors, all that. Yeah, Scorsese would absolutely direct an anime series. I could totally see him doing that. You know, he'd, he'd come in and he'd, he'd tell them what to do. That'd be hilarious. I mean, he, it, would, it, would be a, it would be nuts, but he would do it. Yeah, The Godfather. Totally. Yeah, it's a very Oshii film. Yeah, you're right. Oshi would do a really good Godfather, I think. That very, the very slow, quiet pace, the long cuts. Wow, yeah, thank you. Envelope Antelope, you're absolutely right. You know, Oshi basically is remaking The Godfather with every movie. <laughs> or definitely taking, taking notes from The Godfather. That's funny. Spawn? Yeah, I mean, they did the Spawn... I mean, when Spawn came out on American television, I remember so many people thought it was anime. Like, it was so f different from traditional Western animation. And anime was always, you know, dark and gritty. You do that. And people just were, oh yeah, the, you, you mean the Spawn anime? N no, but okay, whatever. <laughs> Big Bang Theory. I mean, isn't that basically Genshiken? Right? I'm surprised we haven't had an anime adaptation of, like, Skyrim, or Elder Scrolls. It seems like a natural fit to just license that out to an anime studio, let them do something... Let them do something which is really... You know, it's, it's fantasy. Like, just give them the world, they can tell whatever story they want within, within Elder Scrolls, and boom, you're done. Right? The, uh, you, know, you could easily get financiers for it. It would tie into video games. That would be such a natural connection. Because, yeah, I'd love to see a, an anime Wolfenstein. Give me Wolfenstein in anime form. You know, the only problem is that they would spend all, a lot of time on the villains, kind of establishing why all the villains are doing what they're doing. Like, anime loves to, often loves to, uh, establish its villains and, and Wolfenstein is like nah they're just Nazis just kill them although the new games have changed that right but uh, you know, give me anime Wolfenstein you can't really make an a anime out of Doom there's just nothing there to latch on to without making something that's not Doom anymore Doom is such a, a core um, gameplay experience it just doesn't feel right, and I say that as something who I say that as someone who watched the uh, the original Doom live action movie starring The Rock in theaters and 
was thoroughly satisfied until the last like five ten minutes it's like adapting that into basically alien makes total sense and that's like the only story you can tell uh it's not quite doom but it's close enough and then it just went completely off the rails for the last 10 minutes it just made no sense but Wolfenstein ooh yeah Jodorowsky's Dune yeah that'd be interesting take his his designs I wonder I mean the problem with Jodorowsky's style is it is so off the wall it is so not quite abstract surreal that I don't know that anime could do it I don't know that, that anime you know I think an anime is a little too conservative for Jodorowsky's Dune, to be honest. It feels, cr you know, Jodorowsky's Dune just felt so crazy. But yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've said earlier, I think Dune would be a perfect, perfect adaptation source for anime. Yeah, or the Incal. The Incal would, would work. I have a copy of it right over there. Um, but I think, I think Jodorowsky's stuff really fits more like European animation, right? That feels like time travelers and... Um, um, what are the other European, gosh, I'm blanking on the names of, uh, uh, was it Blue Planet? And, uh, there's, there's other, you know, weird European sci-fi sci stuff, like Kaiba. Oh, I disagree, Superman fan. I think of the 80s were more conservative than they are now. 80s had, you know, bizarrely over the top. But it was very specific over the top. Like, like you, you could show people, you know, blood exploding, but you couldn't, you know, you, you didn't get really weird art styles in the eighties. The the art styles in the eighties were pretty, pretty uh, firm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, in the age of Megalobox, I just don't see anime as being all that conservative. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Sony certainly could do some some connections there. Um, would Seven Samurai be a good anime? I think it would. Actually, there was a, a Seven Samurai anime. It was a very loose adaptation. No, 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 I'm sorry. There was a Yojimbo anime adaptation. There was also Samurai 7. So yeah, there was a you know, very loose adaptation of Samurai 7, the, um, or S Seven Samurai called Samurai 7. Uh, it was basically sci-fi, Seven, Sa uh, Seven Samurai, which I've not seen, but I've heard very good things about. Like It's, it's like, how do you stretch it out into 26 episodes? That's how you do it. Um, but that would, that would kind of work. Angel's Egg was 80s, but that, that was, that was, you know, one auteur movie. Um, and even then, you know, it, it, you know, that, that was Oshi going off on a, off on a deep end. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, you know, a TV series, right? It, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't the, the average viewing experience, right? Yeah, Donnie Darko is, you know, basically Lane, or Boogie Pop Phantom. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, anime has certainly proved they can do zombies with certainly High School Dead. That Those first five episodes are, to my mind, the most perfect zombie survival horror story I've ever seen in terms of adhering to the formula and investing you in the formula and pulling you along despite the weird arrow stuff, erotic stuff in it. That was kind of a, you know, odd spice to add into it, but everything else. Yeah, well, we, we already have Blade Runner anime, right? We, we already got the short, the, the Blade Runner short film. Um, but yeah, I think the anime can certainly do zombie films. Um, it's just part of the problem with, with zombies is that <sighs> zombies are often the choice of the live action director because you can get a bunch of extras and dress them up. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a way of making kind of a cheap horror movie uh, as opposed to an anime where there's no there's no real advantage to doing zombie compared to anything else. It's, it's kind of harder to do zombie than, than anything else because you have to, you know, design them, animate them, have lots of different people with different outfits and so forth. It's just, um, it's harder to do, but they can certainly do it. Ghostbusters, yeah. Yeah, Ghostbusters the manga, which was, yeah. Um... Oh, I'd see either version in anime. Totally. Of, of Ghostbusters. I don't know if you're against either of those. Yeah, Van, yeah, Helsing. Yeah, they should do a, they should do a Helsing anime. A Van Helsing anime. That'd be a good idea. 
Um, so we stick together. Um, that is like somebody saying, I have never eaten food. What food should I start with? What genres do you like? What kind of, of you know, do you like comedies, dramas, action, heist movies, whatever? And we can recommend something based on that. Yeah, Pacific Rim. They should do a giant robots. They should do a giant robot anime. That would be a great idea. <laughs> yeah, Dead Space anime series. There we go. I'm trying to think of other... Um, I mean, we have a Halo anime, so that, that fits. Are there any werewolf anime? Yes. Um, I'm trying because I've seen the, the imagery. Um, it's not certainly not popular, certainly not common. Um, but I'm sure it's out there. I just, I'm blanking on it at the moment. Yeah, Wolf's Rain. There we go. And Wolf's Rain. Technically werewolves. They're actually wolves. But, right? But, uh, you know, you're, you're right. Wolf's Rain is certainly in that, in that general genre. Um, I, I know I've seen anime of somebody, you know, doing the transformation sequence. Um, that's a good question. It's, it, that, that's a... A theme that hasn't really crossed over into anime much. I think it's just more of a Western, you know, story concept, werewolves, that uh, doesn't really fit into Asian stuff as well, where vampires, they've, you know, um, anime has, or Japanese culture has the concept of supernatural humans who can do strange things to humans. And so it kind of fits, you know, vampire fits better. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Spice and Wolf has a bit of a, I mean, not really. Like, like you say, it's kind of in the same genre. You're right! Wolf Children's totally a werewolf story. Well done, Master Chief. Wolf Children, that, those are werewolves. Straight up. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Wolf Children. Vampires are kind of played out. We, we had a lot of vampires. We've already had a lot of vampires. You know, we've had, we had all the Anne Rice stuff. We had all the Twilight stuff. I'm, I'm personally, I'm kind of done with, uh, with vampires and werewolves. Um, yes, I visited Japan, the 10 days solo. You like comedy. So, uh, recommendation in the chat room, go ahead and, and go and throw some things out. Um, I'll go ahead and recommend, uh, Child's Toy, aka Kodocha. It's about a 12 year old girl who's an actress, very over the top, very silly. Um, you know, I think sort of very high energy comedy for child's toy um beyond that i really like azamanga dayo which is about high school girls uh kind of absurdist humor enjoy that one yeah well it's funny galaxy rangers was animated in japan and that was straight up animated at i think toy um well there are five times more zombie stuff than vampire stuff now but there weren't 10 years or 20 years ago Right? Like, I, I grew up in an age when vampires were everywhere. So the, so the vampire stuff has... The vampire stuff burned itself out before the zombie stuff came along. Z zombies were the reaction to vampire. Right? The, the zombies were, we're sick of vampire, let's do zombies now. So I'd, I'd rather not go back to vampires, frankly. I'm just... I'm done. Um, witches, I think, are going to be the next big thing. It's just, it makes, makes sense, you know. Female protagonists, magic powers. You can go sexy if you want to. Just bet on witches, I would say. Jurassic Park, yeah. I've seen anime with dinosaurs, but it's always been like a time travel thing or, or things along those lines. Oh, zombies are burning out. They're, they're, they're burning out now. Right, everyone complains about The Walking Dead. People are rolling their eyes at that. Yeah, Frankenstein style anime. There, uh, Robot Carnival, the, the, uh, it's a film made of segments of things. Uh, what do you call that? Gosh, uh, but Robot, Robot Carnival has it's a series of short films basically, and that has a, a basic Frankenstein segment. Um, that would work. Yeah, uh, if you're looking for that. But yeah, I, I let me see. I mean. Anime certainly does delve into the Frankenstein kind of concept with his androids, right? Astro Boy is basically a Frankenstein story. Um, Blackjack, kind of, technically. Twilight Zone. 
We've certainly gotten Twilight Zone style stories, though. You know, Kino's Journey is basically Twilight Zone. I have not seen Empire of Cor Corpses, so I'm, I'm not sure. Anthology, that's what I'm thinking of. It's an anthology film. And to that point, we don't get a lot of anthology anime series. Uh, for, for, for you know, Unfortunately, I, you're absolutely right. That it would, I think I would love to see a Twilight Zone style anime series, but for some reason we just don't seem to get anthology stories, which are different. Well, I, I do know why, because it's more expensive, right? You have to design half a dozen new characters for every single episode, as opposed to having a bunch of, you know, half a dozen high schoolers who wear the same clothes for every episode, right? So that's, unfortunately, not something we get that often. Mmm, The Crow, yes. Yeah, The Crow feels like one of those concepts where if somebody came up with it now, they'd probably say, just, just animate that. Like, why why do that in live action? The Crow feels so anime. That would be that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, something's itching in the back of my mind. Um, oh, there's an interesting one. Redwall and the other, like, you know, m Mouse Guard, you know, uh, small furry animals protecting the world stuff that's not quite furry right they're not anthropomorphic they are actually mice and squirrels and so forth they just you know have hats on and, and swords be interesting to see anime do that there was a red wall british tv series but seeing something like that done in anime would be really interesting because there's so much anime of animals right you have all of those the world mass Beast theater stuff and um there have been a lot of kind of talking animal anime you know, back in well, the 70s and 80s, but it seems like the the experience would be there. They could they could make it happen. And there's enough kind of furry adjacent stuff in anime where you get like wolf children and and things like that. Uh, you know, some of the, the side characters in uh, Gundam Build Divers. Yeah, I think there's enough expertise there to make a talking animals anime work really well. Then again, you, you have that thing where... You cannot do Talking Animals live action. It would just be primitively expensive to do all the, the, the uh, CGI. Just do an anime. Mm. Yeah, I'll push back on X-Files personally because I think the scary thing about it, the X-Files is the fact that it is you know real life. You are seeing real physical people interacting with these things and you feel like that's going to happen to you. Whereas animation being a little more, you know, um, at a at a distance, and obviously we you know, we all get invested in anime characters. Um, so I, I could see X Files, but huh, yeah, Outer Limits. Yeah, Brother Karamazov. I could see it. I mean, we certainly have huge long dramas in anime. I mean, what is Legend of the Galactic Heroes except a Russian novel, basically just in space? That's basically what that series is. People standing around talking to each other about character number 355. Beetlejuice. Do you think you could do an anime that's better than the Beetlejuice weekday afternoon cartoon series? You probably could. But that'd be a, that's a tall order. You know, doing a, 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 a better Beetlejuice than the Beetlejuice animated series. Back to the Future, yeah. Huh. Back to the Future is interesting because you know, those are kind of one-off stories. I, I'm trying to imagine the... I guess if you're doing like a movie, you could totally do a, an animated movie of Back to the Future. That would work. Um, you're probably not a TV series because there's not really there. Yeah, my Mummy series, I would do Mummy. Yeah, I think Mummy Mummy would work really well. I think a lot of those... Again, we, have, we certainly had vampires and that stuff. The classic universal things. Mmm... Spy thriller, that'd be cool. Yeah, we don't get a lot of those sort of James Bond-esque or Hunt for October kind of stories from the, uh, in anime. It's just not a big thing. I wonder why that is. Well, it's because, yeah, anime doesn't want, uh, Japan doesn't want to be seen as cloak and dagger. So they're, you know, they, they downplay the amount of special ops stuff done by the Japanese military. You know, they don't have an army. So, yeah. You're right, H.P. Lovecraft would be great. Red Dwarf, ooh, yeah. Anim anime, the comedy with the sci-fi. That's such a natural fit. Tonto, well done. Weird Science, sure. I mean, a lot of anime is basically weird science. And that that's, you know, isn't that basically, um, 
Actually, there's oh, uh, My Dear Marie. Was an anime series about a boy who invents an android girlfriend. Warhammer? Sure. Warhammer is so anime. Warhammer is just kind of every anime trope all thrown together. <laughs> E.T. anime. That'd be weird. Possible, but weird. What about like a Stranger Things? Like a, you know, a Spielberg-esque kids thriller slash horror story done in anime. I think that would work well. You got kid protagonists, which anime has all the time. Add in the horror, add in the, the weirdness, do like the, the Junji Ito collection, you know, make it horrific. Wee Bop Phantom is basically Stranger Things. I mean, it's not, but it's that kind of tone, that kind of feel. Lily Cat. Yeah, Lily Cat is an anime ripoff of aliens, totally. Alien. Um, gosh, I haven't thought about Lily Cat in a long time. Felix the Cat remake. A Felix the Cat anime. Wow. That would be nuts. I would so pay to see that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Felix the Felix the Cat. Gertie the Dinosaur, anime style. <laughs> that's that's really cool. Alright, on that note, I think we've come we've gone through a lot of stuff. So yeah, we want to see everything done in anime. I think that is just kind of our our idea there, is we get all of those things. So uh, we'll see what anime... We'll, we'll probably see something out of the anime industry that's an adaptation of something sooner or later, especially as there's more you know, correlation between the, the two sides. There's more reason for that, so we'll see. But uh, thanks for the great debate. We'll see you all next week with another interesting topic. See you then.